Welcome back, America. We're here with Speaker Mike Johnson. It's a pleasure, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we talk off the air and text from time to time. I just want people to know what a decent man you are and how you're trying to help save this country. And in that respect, Mr. Speaker, Joe Biden's running around saying he's going to save democracy from Donald Trump. Now, I want to ask you, you have first-hand experience with Joe Biden's type of democracy. Tell me, he's pushing through what are all these legislative acts on immigration. He's defying your actions in Congress in support of Israel. Uh, tell me, how is he saving democracy from your perspective? It's the opposite of that, Mark, as you pointed out so well. It is lawlessness. It really is. He has no regard for our constitutional system or how the, the separate branches are supposed to operate. He's abused these executive orders, and he's done great harm to the country. I mean, just on the border alone, just one example. I mean, you noted uh, almost 100 executive orders. We documented so many of them that he began to take from day one, the first day he walked into that Oval Office, to open that border wide, he and Mayorkas and his accomplices. And it's done untold damage to the country. We'll be dealing with this for decades. There, there's, there's no way to unwind it. And, and he's allowed in, of course, millions of illegals. They welcome them with open arms. They put them on taxpayer benefits, you know. They've sent them all around the country. And included in that number, of course, is terrorists on the known, known dangerous people on the terrorist watch list. We have violent criminals now. We have more and more stories like Rachel Morin and Lake and Riley and innocent Americans who are being preyed upon. And this is going to continue for the foreseeable future. And now, we're worried about terrorist attacks on the homeland. He allowed all this, but not just allowed it, Mark, he engineered it. They did it intentionally, and the American people know that, and that's why they're so fed up. On this issue, again, that's one of the areas, immigration, the environment, Israel, and so forth and so on. Do you not get frustrated because this president seems to be a cowboy president when it comes to foreign policy, when it comes to the provision of weapons and ammunition to Israel, how he slow walks that? The border, uh, I guess you're as surprised as anybody else when he comes out and all of a sudden half a million illegal aliens are being legalized through backdoor amnesty. Um, does he ever pick up the phone, Mr. Speaker, and say, look, I want to talk to you about these 500 a thousand, this fi these 500,000 illegal aliens, what we can do about it. Does he ever pick up the phone and say, look, I want to talk to you about Israel and we're holding, withholding these? In other words, he keeps talking about bipartisanship, but the Republicans are blocking him. Does he ever make a real effort to work with you? No, of course not. Uh, listen, he knows that those proposals would never make their way through Congress, and that's why he does an end run around Congress. He doesn't bother to, to call the Speaker of the House or talk this through or try to come to some sort of bipartisan consensus, because he knows we'd never put up with it. The American people would not put up with it. I mean, on Israel, for example, I mean, they're sending exactly the wrong message. He's been appeasing Iran, appeasing uh, the great, uh, you know, all their proxies, uh, Hamas and Hezbollah, and criticizing Israel at their time of greatest need. I mean, he wouldn't stand with us strongly on the International Criminal Court that would issue arrest warrants for the Prime Minister of Israel in the middle of their fight for survival. I mean, it's just madness. The things that come out of that White House don't surprise us anymore. And I'm asked all over the, you know, all over the country, Mark, I mean, I'm traveling nonstop around the nation to make sure that we can win this election cycle. And I believe we will because of all this nonsense. But in the now 132 cities where I've done campaign events in over 30 states now, uh, the same questions are asked everywhere. They, they want to know who's running the country because they see Joe Biden, they see his weakness that he projects in public, and they don't believe that he's actually making these decisions on his own. They're not. I can attest to that. I don't believe he is. I believe it's a small group of advisors and activists and, and people that have agendas that are in his ear every day. They're handing him executive orders to sign that he's not even sure what the impact is. And uh, it's, it's a group of radical leftists who are trying to turn our country into something it's not. And I think that's why they're going to pay a big price for this uh, at the ballot in November. So democracy, what you're defining there is a cabal, a cabal of individuals working basically out of the White House who are running the country. We don't really know who's doing what. They have Biden signing executive orders, which defy separation of powers, which violate the authority, the spending powers and so forth of the Congress. He's defying Supreme Court orders. He's done it on at least two occasions. Uh, the border is wide open. It's now wider open as a result of his policy. Let me ask it this way. How many one-on-one -on -one meetings have you had with Joe Biden, just you and him? 
Uh, just he and I alone, only one time. And that uh, should be a cause of concern for the American people. The idea that the Speaker of the House and the President of the United States would not be able to meet regularly at, a, at such a dangerous time in the country's history um, is pretty absurd. But um, his staff uh, can never seem to schedule that. They, um, they try to avoid my being with him because I suppose they're afraid he's going to say something off script. Um, and that's, a, that's a, a great concern. It should be to the American people. But I tell you what, they have great confidence, the people do, in the opponent in this race, and that's Donald J. Trump. And I'm telling you, the interesting thing about this campaign for president is the first time in many decades when you have two presidents with an actual record, and everybody's going to look at that and evaluate it accordingly. I think that's why we're going to have a great November. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.